Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. And this, of course, is our uh, weekly college football wrap up edition. <laughs> Joining me today, as usual, is the official Format Podcast uh, college football analyst, former Illinois Fighting Illini, former Indianapolis Colt, former Ottawa Red Black, former BC Lion former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, and I know I'm forgetting one. Uh, Winnipeg, you there. You you got Winnipeg it. Blue Bomber, Winnipeg. there we go. <laughs> that's right, that's right. This is our wide receiver and kick return specialist, Ryan Langford. What's good, bro? Hey, man, glad to be here. Definitely, definitely glad to have so you. So much for always. having me again. Always, always. All right, well, um, let's get right to it, man. But, oh, well, before we do that, you know, we got to do our little thing. So uh, you're watching the show, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm, do whatever you got to do to remember Saturday nights at 7 p.m. We are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't. All right. All right. So uh, let's get right to it, man. Ryan, um, when we left last week, we were kind of concerned that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the schedule for uh, week six in college football was going to be kind of lame and uh Lo and behold, we had some crazy stuff happen, man. We really <laughs> did. We really did. It was crazy. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had some big upsets, uh, namely in the SEC, and uh, had one in the uh, Big Ten as well. So um, we will we'll get right into it. So the first one, uh, number four, Tennessee goes down to Arkansas in in a conference battle, and that was a surprise. Just basically um, looking at the way uh, Tennessee had played all season long. Uh, obviously, they were undefeated going in, and um, you know, uh, they got upset. But I think one of the biggest things about seeing these upsets is um, I think it's making college football even more exciting because in the past, an upset like this would probably end your chances of competing for a national championship as the, the college football playoff was only four teams. And now that it's expanded out to 12, if you're a good enough team and you have a solid schedule, you can probably survive two losses and uh, get into the playoffs. Like we always say, just get in the tournament, right? So, um, uh, yeah, what, what, what did you think of these upsets and, and how much do you think they will uh, affect the apple cart uh, or maybe upset the proverbial apple cart? Yeah, well, like you said, I mean, it's a different, you know, landscape now that you got more time to kind of get into uh, the, the playoff now that it's kind of expanded a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I still think it, it's interesting to see these teams that are, you know, ranked pretty high and these upsets to – to kind of mm -hmm. see what that does to the mental of teams and how they're going to respond and be able to, you know, continue to keep moving forward and, and make that pushes for the playoffs. So um, I think this was a, this was an interesting game. I would, like you said, I was not expected to see Arkansas go out there and, and, and win a game like that, but um, we'll see if this will really affect, you know, Tennessee too much in the, in the future. I like to think that it won't, I think they'll be able to kind of bounce back and, and, and keep moving forward and, hopefully be able to get a bid to make it into the playoffs later. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so, uh, this, this upset, I did not expect this at all. Tennessee, yeah. I expected them to, uh, handle business fairly easily, you know, maybe not a 30 point win, but a solid double digit win I expected. And, um, so I guess this is maybe the first game that we saw, uh, Nico, I am a, I am a Leava. Um, the the t highly touted freshman quarterback from Tennessee kind of look a little more average, right? He didn't turn the ball over. He didn't throw any touchdowns, but only 17 of 29 for uh, 158 uh, passing yards. So nothing outstanding, but um, solid balance. They ran the ball 36 times for 174. So um, you like to see that. And, you know, there were times in the past when Josh Heupel uh, running that spread would really kind of get taught, caught up, excuse me, and just throwing the football all over the place. But And I don't know if it's a function of having a freshman quarterback or just looking for balance as, as a coach in your offensive system. Uh, you saw more of that, but it uh, it didn't turn out to uh, win the game. And Arkansas uh, pulls, up, pulls off, excuse me, the upset. Um, was there anything that stood out to you in this game that you think was, um, 
you know, uh, the primary factor in facilitating the Razorbacks coming out of there with a win? Yeah, well, well I think Arkansas, um, you know, they came to play, right? So every team, everyone has their same preparation, but when it's game time, you got to come out there and play play and I think Arkansas really stepped Mm -hmm. up to the challenge they believed that they could win Um, one group that stood out to me specifically was the Arkansas receiving core as a whole Uh, I think they really played some really good football Um, they spread the ball around and they made some big catches and those big catches kept Arkansas in the game and were crucial for them uh, when they needed the most they're you know those receivers were helping this quarterback out and I think ultimately Mm -hmm. that's what kind of took them over the top the playmakers made plays they were catching short yardage you know, routes and, and going for another 10, going for another eight yards, and that makes a big difference. So, um, and, you know, Tennessee wasn't able to, to capitalize on that. They missed some big plays or they missed some some connections on that last drive going in for some right. points that had they made those connections, it could have been a different game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm just looking here and uh, we, we see uh, Arkansas wide receiver Andrew Armstrong with, uh, you know, one of – a game that a lot of people would die for nine catches, 132 yards. So, you know, yeah, really, yeah. Uh, really big stuff, obviously, you know, key catches when they needed it most. And so uh, that that's um, mm-hmm. that's definitely good to see. Although uh, it is funny that um, uh, Arkansas is a team, 297 passing yards, but uh, their scoring came on running the football. So, you know, right. I get, let me ask you um, as, as a wide receiver, you're catching the football down the field and you're getting into the red zone and then they hand it off. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're re- ultimately we're trying to score, you know, we're trying yes. to win a game and yes. um, it does get a little bit harder to pass the ball once you mm-hmm. get in the red zone. Cause if you think about it, mm-hmm. there's less feel for the defenders to cover. So everything gets a little, a little bit more compact. It gets a little bit more tough. The playbook gets smaller. So, um, if it's more beneficial to run the ball and get it in, you know, that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, yeah, this uh, I don't think this particular loss um, is going to hurt uh, Tennessee too badly. I mean, Arkansas was unranked, but I still don't think it's going to hurt mm-hmm. them too badly because, as we know, there's SEC bias in, in the minds of the voters. So that's going to be what that's going to be. And of course, even though this is an unranked team, they're still going to push the narrative of, well, it's the SEC and, you know, that gauntlet, every game is tough in the SEC. And we'll see another one that maybe kind of goes along with that um, coming up here next. But uh, I don't think Tennessee is going to drop too far. I still don't believe that that is a team um, as good as they are, that is capable of winning a national championship, but that is a quality football team. I believe that. So I guess it's just left for us to see, uh, how far the Vols can go. But yeah, that was a that was a big upset and probably the first of a few um going down this season, but really the first of uh three big ones on that particular day. So, you know, there's that. And you know what, quick note, I didn't even put it in the rundown, but um Minnesota beat USC. So what what we're seeing here yeah. is what we're seeing here is uh the soft mentality of a Lincoln Riley team and a team from out west for the most part. Uh, we're seeing that soft mentality manifest itself now that they're in the Big Ten. You know, uh, USC was uh, beaten by Michigan and now beaten by Minnesota. So um, clearly you can punch those guys in the mouth and uh, you can win those football games. Now they're not rolling over as badly as they would in you know the last mm-hmm. couple of years. But still, we're seeing that they're going to have to find a way to uh, to, to toughen up if they're going to be uh, effective in that conference. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, move right on to the next one. So I know this one hurt your household. Um, Alabama. It did, it and, did, it did. <laughs> and uh, that's a, that's probably the last one I would have expected. And um, let me give a shout out to uh, Clark Lee, uh, Vanderbilt head coach, who's a former defensive coordinator at, uh, I guess, Notre Dame, right? And right. so um, got a lot of respect for that guy. Uh, he's used to the environment with uh, – "Quote unquote smart kids and and the high academic um the high academic standards and not necessarily getting the uh the best studs into uh playing your program but you know coaching up the guys that you have so uh, arguably the the biggest and best win in program history uh, Vanderbilt beating number one Alabama forty to thirty five and uh, that's crazy because that was a game that uh um. The spectacle of college football is something else. Uh, so uh, Vanderbilt wins that game. And what did they – they took down the goalposts and carried them six miles to dump it in the river. I'm like, I really don't understand that, but I guess it's just a college football thing. Um, 
did, did you guys ever have a huge win like that that kind of made your uh major Illini crowd go nuts to do some crazy stuff like that? Yeah, we had a big one. We had a big one my freshman year. Um, mm -hmm. Arizona State came in. College college game day was there. It was a night game. Oh, wow. We striped the stadium. Nice. Um, and that was probably one of our biggest games. Uh, A.J. Jenkins had a huge touchdown that kind of won the game. Mm. Game, last play, driver out kind of thing. Um, not last play, but, you know, that ultimately put us over the edge. And, yeah, mm. it was it was, it was it was a wild time. The goalpost did not go down, but uh, it, was, <laughs> it was a pretty big game. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, so Alabama goes down here um, as number one, and that's immediately following uh, the huge win um, last week, two weeks ago now, over Georgia, snapping their, uh, what was it, 40-something 40, 40 game uh, regular season uh, win streak. And so, you know, they were riding high, and uh, like can happen when you're riding high, uh, they got caught by a team that was well-prepared and uh, just ready to go out and play. Jalen Milrow has another... Uh, pretty much outstanding day, 18 of 24 for 310 yards, uh, one touchdown. Did get the one interception, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Vanderbilt was uh, uh, pretty much right there the whole way. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Vandy got out to a lead and Bama mm -hmm. fought back, but uh, Vanderbilt was able to hold on. So tell me, what are your thoughts um, from this game? I I'm seeing something standing out to me, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I think Alabama definitely was kind of sleepwalking out there. Yeah, I don't know if they were being a little hungover from the Georgia game and putting a lot of a lot of emotion and stuff into that, um, mm -hmm. or, or what. But they were not looking as sharp as they should have looked um, coming okay. out against Vanderbilt. Um, this is another reason why I love college football, and it touches back on the whole momentum thing that we talked about. Playing in your home field advantage, you know, having the idea that, hey, we can beat anyone in the country. That's how Vandy felt when they ran out of the locker room, right? There was probably no one in there in the world that thought that this could happen except those guys. And um, mm -hmm. they went out there and they played. They played football. They they did what they needed to do. And um, it hit Alabama in the mouth. What's going to help them is now this 15, you know, this um, new playoff system. And when before that would have, you know, knocked them out. A loss like this, and like right, like right. we about with the last game, would have knocked them out. But this is really going to see how teams are going to respond, how they're going to be able to kind of overcome, make the corrections mm -hmm. that they need to, and remember that hey, we we got to come prepared every week. We got to come prepared every game, and if we are not doing what we need to do, teams will embarrass us <laughs> on national TV every time. <laughs> right. I'll tell you what's funny about that is <clears throat> everyone seems so high on uh, Kalen DeBoer. Uh, immediately following the Georgia win. And I tell you, the, the fickle nature of fans and unfortunately of the sports media is crazy because I think I saw um, an article immediately after the Vanderbilt loss for Alabama saying something like, I'll, I'll loosely quote the headline, but it's basically saying like, this is the type of game Saban never would have lost. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah. And, and realistically, that's probably true because one thing about uh, Coach Saban, um, arguably the best coach in, in college football history is that his team never lost a game they should have won. And maybe maybe they lose a game here and there to a team that's equally as talented, et cetera, or, mm -hmm. or equally as, you know, almost as well coached, but they don't lose games that they should win. And mm -hmm. uh, this was that example. And now, uh, you know, that Alabama fan base is so extremely spoiled with years and years of winning and just multiple championships. What, is it, what did Saban win? Um, a championship almost won every three years for the time that he was there. Like that – that's insane, right? That's absurd. But he, he was that good and he had that much success uh, for the Tide. And so this program is spoiled. So Kalen DeBoer, he's, he's got to be careful, but he's still got to be himself. And it's easy for me to say, but those Bama fans also have to let him have time. This is his first year in the system. He's not going to be mm -hmm. saving. He still has to implement all his stuff and, you know, get in all his players. Don't get me wrong. He's got a lot of good players there, right? But he's got to implement his thing. But uh, that's easy for me to say, right? Looking from, uh, you know, fighting Irish glasses, I guess. <laughs> you know, that, that's a problem we'd love to have. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, uh, that that game, I, I tell you what, that's um, you, you do love to see the excitement of the students and, and the fans uh, at the end of a game like that with, when you see a, a monumentous upset uh, of that caliber. Um, real quick, Ryan Williams. I'm sure we've talked about him before, but just give me your thoughts on him again. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, being a true freshman and you having been in those shoes and just 
How incredible is it how easily he has stepped into big time college football and is balling? Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's exciting to see. Um, I, I I love seeing it. Right. I was able to go in and play as a freshman, but I was not at the University of Alabama. Right. <laughs> right I was not right. doing the things that this man was doing. Um, right. So I am tipping my hat to his game every every week. I love the confidence that he plays with. I also love the freedom that he plays with. He still has this kind of high school ass. I'm just out there playing. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm trying stuff and it's working. Um, and I love that. And I love that for him. Um, I'm interested to see what his leadership qualities are like. And no one will really see that because no one's in the locker room day to day. No one's in the huddle day to day. But right. I'm very interested to see this freshman come in and make plays and, you know, where that kind of puts him on the total leadership, especially in the receiver room. Um, right. He could be a guy that that could be leading as a freshman year if he's not leading already. Um, mm -hmm. And it's he has an exciting game to watch and, he, and he's a smart player and, and I love how they're using him down there. And that was going to be uh, my next question for you. Uh, does he need to lead? The kid is 17 years old. I mean, obviously his skill set would say um, he's probably the best in that room, be a leader, but he's 17 years <laughs> old. Again, like, does he need to step in there leading or does he need to just uh, continue to work hard, fit in with the guys and then make plays on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I think you can always be a leader, right? With coach, I, you know, coach uh, Paul Petrino gave me a, a saying my freshman year. He was like, basically, you know, you know, you can be a leader just by your actions, right? He doesn't have to say anything, but how he moves and the things that he does, regardless of being a freshman or a senior, can show leadership qualities. Um, and I think if he's doing that, that is just another uh, check in his toolbox for when he does try to make it to the next level that, hey, this guy can play football. Um, and has leadership qualities that he can, you know, rally the troops around and and do what he needs to do to help his guys get in a position to win. So um, mm -hmm. I think leadership can kind of just happen and be born into it. But everyone is, you know, is not a leader. Um, and, you know, if he's not a leader, that does not take away from the greatness that he does on the field. So um, it would just be a bonus if he was that leader who also was making plays on the field like that. Right. In right. my opinion. No, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, was there anything else that really stood out to you about this game that you wanted to uh, touch on before we uh, move to the next one? No, I think this rolls just back with that momentum. Um, mm -hmm. Vandy wanted to win. Right. Alabama yeah, knew bro. they could win and they mm -hmm. just went out there and played football and realized, oh, we're running out of time. We didn't. We like, ran out of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think Vandy was like, no, nah, we coming in, putting mm -hmm. black jerseys on. We, we, mm -hmm. we come up with blood. And that's what they did. So um, if you're in a game and your team fully expects to come in there and kind of roll and easily mm -hmm. defeat the other team, how long does it take before you realize, wait a minute, we're in a game here and we could be in trouble? Yeah, well, halftime is always a, is a, is a big moment, right? Because people can kind of jump out on you. Mm -hmm. um, but that halftime and those two drives coming in and out of halftime, yeah. I would say, are, are you know, important. Um, but you never want to have that feeling. It, it's tough when you're on the road and someone gets up and then you get a turnover and they get up again. And it's like, oh, you can kind of feel the walls kind of coming in. Fans are getting a little bit louder. Um, mm -hmm. That's what makes football great because you got to overcome those. You got to block out the noise, handle the plays as they come one by one and just slowly chip away and get yourself back in the game. Unfortunately, Alabama wasn't able to do that, and Vandy got the win and going to have to order a new goalpost down there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. And um, I'm sure this was also huge for Vanderbilt recruiting. So Yeah. Oh, man. Um, All the way. Yeah. yeah, huge day. Huge day. All right. Um, we will go on now. Uh, we'll leave the SEC and head out to the Big Ten, newly constituted Big Ten. Uh, Michigan defending national champions, and I think it's pretty clear that they will not repeat as national champions. They may or may not even make the 12 team playoff, but they were upset on the road against uh, the Washington Huskies. Um, that was another one really. I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised when Michigan loses, because at this point, um, excuse me, they're so one dimensional. They um, mm -hmm. they have a lot of difficulty mm -hmm. because uh, their quarterback position is in flux and we know that they can run the football, but uh, they have issues at quarterback and. Uh, defensively, you've got a guy, an outstanding defensive coach from the NFL and Wink Martindale. So uh, they're running the same system that they ran with Jesse Minter and prior to that with Mike McDonald as uh, Wink Martindale kind of coached both of those guys up um, 
they were on his staff with, with the Ravens. So they're running the same system, except Wink Martindale is um, ultra aggressive with the blitz. And if you blitz and don't get home, well, you know this better than I do. You're going to get beat. And um, ultimately, that seems to be what is happening to an extent with Michigan. So they were ranked number 10 and they will likely um, they will they will drop down. Um so now we are going to see what happens with them going forward. Uh, two quarterbacks played in that game for the Wolverines, and they only got 113 yards passing. I don't know yeah. if this is about the Wolverine quarterback skill sets or if it's about scheme. I, I really don't know, because if you have quarterbacks that have difficulty throwing the football, what you need to do at that point is you've got to scheme it open to make things easier for them, mm -hmm. especially uh, I think Tuttle's a freshman. So you're, you want to be in a situation where uh, you, your play design gets guys open to make the reads easier for him. Alex Orgy, he's more of an option style quarterback, but he is, um, hate to say, but he's a terrible passer. He's just bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, yeah, Michigan wasn't able to uh, win this game. Um, they rushed the ball 37 times as Michigan will do. For 174 mm -hmm. yards so that's what you want to see but um they just weren't able to uh they weren't able to win this uh win this game at the end so um 27 17 washington beats them where are you on that yeah i think washington looked really impressive i was impressed with them um i think they moved the ball offensively really really well and kind of kept michigan off balance a bit um mm -hmm. and I was impressed. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think it, it was going to kind of turn out this way personally. Um, but there were Washington was kind of giving some glimpses of the past Washington's that we fell in love with um, being able to move the ball around guys making plays. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they got a pretty, I would say semi favorable schedule that can, you know, kind of help them. And they've got some big games coming up that if they can overcome them, you know, could position them in, in, in a position to kind of go on a run and, and possibly, you know, get back, you know, towards the national championship. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to see. I think that is going to be a stretch to do that. But, again, once you get in the playoffs, um, you just got to get hot and keep rolling. And the way that they were moving the ball around, um, that could be hard to stop. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it. I would say the biggest games left on the schedule for Washington are uh, number 18, Indiana, number four, Penn right. State, and number three, Oregon. And we know that those rankings probably won't hold. They will likely change uh, by the time they get there to play those guys. But um, right. those are the three best teams that they've got left on their schedule. So we'll see, man. The, the Big Ten is um, it's pretty challenging now, and especially as they've done away with the divisions. Um, you may get lucky one year and not have to play Michigan or Ohio State, but in that same year, you may have to play Penn State. You may have to play uh, um, Oregon. You know, you may have to play Indiana looks good this year. So th there's a lot of good teams in that conference. So uh, yeah, very, very interesting uh, what we've got going on. Um, yeah, Michigan, uh, it's looking unlikely that they'll even make the 12-team yeah, yeah. playoff, which that that's tough, you know, coming off a national championship season. Uh, they just lost to Washington, so they've got your guys um, on the 19th, Illinois, uh, mm -hmm. followed by uh, Michigan State. They've got Oregon, but they do have Oregon at the big house, so that's a plus. Then they've got yeah. Indiana. Northwestern and of course they finish in the game with Ohio State so mm -hmm. and I'm sure Ohio State is looking to really take it out on them this year so um yes uh yeah tough sledding the rest of the way it wouldn't surprise me if Michigan ended up with four losses uh at the end of this year yeah. which is you know that's that's tough but hey you, you got a chip last year and now you come back you rebuild uh you either find a really good quarterback in the portal or you train up the guys you got so right 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 yeah yeah um, so yeah, man, that three, three, uh, pretty big upsets last week and, uh, very surprising stuff going on. I was like, what? Um, which, which is cool because you know, all that helps my Irish. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. good with that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's the beautiful thing, you know, when guys lose above you now, it, it, if you keep doing what you're supposed to do, it helps you. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, man, Paul Feinbaum, uh, he ripped Kalen DeBoer. You don't lose to Vanderbilt. Jeez. Mm, but I thought true. I thought every I thought every team in the SEC was so great. Why can't you lose to Vanderbilt? <laughs> but anyway, I'm I'm not even I'm not even going to do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll do our week seven look ahead and then I'll get you out of here, uh, Ryan. So um, 
these the, the two games I'm looking forward to are obviously the two in the uh, in the thumbnail here. Uh, Ohio State at Oregon. I think that's going to be freaking awesome. And of course, Red River rivalry, uh, Oregon and Texas. Um, I just hope that one is close because I think Texas is easily the best team in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you, as you know, you can never underestimate a rivalry game, right? The, these guys, it's it's serious when they play one another. Um, I think USC Penn State's also going to be another one, but I think Penn State is going to go ahead and take care of that. Um, yeah. How badly? I don't know, but some good games on the slate. And uh, one I didn't put on the thumbnail was uh, Ole Miss and LSU. But which games are you uh, most looking forward to from this week? Well, of course, I got Illinois back. We're off of, off of bye week. Yes. So Illinois, Purdue. Um, and yeah. Purdue is, I would say, you know, kind of that Vanderbilt feeling, right? So Purdue can, can play football. Illinois should win this game. Just coming off of a bye, how are they going to be? Hopefully they're not mm-hmm. sleep, sleepwalking when they're coming out. It would be smart to come out, hit them in the mouth, keep playing the game. You know, Purdue might lay down, and then, boom, you can you can win the game. Interested, yeah. interested to see Alabama again, right, how they're going to mm-hmm. respond. They're playing South Carolina. Should be able to handle that game back in Tuscaloosa. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll see what that's going to be. Both of those games that you have up there, interested to see how Ohio State's going to look against yeah. Oregon. Well, really how Oregon defense is going to respond to Ohio State. Right. They've been looking powerful. Their receivers are making some big boy catches. Um, so I'm excited to see that. And I believe Oklahoma could take down Texas. Going to be tough. Going to be Very tough. tough. But Texas is crazy, man. We've seen, we have seen week in and week out that big teams yeah, can go yeah. down. And you yeah. know, Texas right now should be feeling themselves. Right now, mm-hmm. if they're letting mm-hmm. that get to them head, we'll, we'll have to see. But Texas right. should be like, yeah, well, we told y'all we was coming, and they here, and now we, yeah. you know, the Texas number back. one ranked team in the country. They should, they yeah. should, they should kind of feel themselves a little bit. So I'm interested mm-hmm. to see how how they'll feel um, and how they will respond when when Oklahoma, you know, t- gets on the field. It, it should be an exciting game. I believe Quinn Ewers is back, so Arch Manning is going to go ahead and return to uh, his seat on the bench. Although you know he's really good, and so uh, is is how how good must it feel to have Quinn Ewers, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, uh, probably a top five guy, and then right behind him you have Arch Manning. Like, how good must that feel if you're Sark? Jeez. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a great feeling, and it's a great feeling when you're winning. Now, of if course. you're in a situation where your number one wasn't doing too well, and they, you got Manning on the bench, then then you then it's a lot of oh, yeah. that comes mm-hmm. into play. But when things are rolling and, and guys have bought into the program and the longevity of like, hey, we're trying to win a national championship, it's it's a great feeling, a great feeling to have guys in place that can come in and do what they do in practice. Because the backup quarterback is not the first time that he's running with the one offense when it's when it's time mm-hmm. to play the game, right? You're working on right. those things in practice, certain situations from time to time. So to see it roll as well as it does in the practice, that, that that's just a great feeling as coach. Mm-hmm. Here's another one we didn't mention that we probably can uh, look forward to. Number 18, Kansas State, 4-1 and one at Colorado, coming off a bye. And uh, Colorado coming off a, a, a good, strong win, a dominating win at UCF. Uh, yep. the last time out. Um, so I think that this is a, a kind of litmus test game for Colorado at this point in the season. And mm-hmm. if they had, you know, a really solid two weeks of preparation, they get out here and they win this game. They may be telling some people something in the big 12 and right. in all seriousness, they may uh, be starting to, you know, creep in that door for a playoff spot. If they, mm-hmm. if they win the big 12, because if they beat Kansas state, then they've got Arizona after that, then Cincinnati, Texas tech, so those are three manageable games. And then mm-hmm. number 16, Utah, on November 16th, followed by Kansas and Oklahoma State. That's very manageable. They could find themselves yeah. in the Big 12 championship game. And if they win that thing, you know, that's a berth in the playoff. And how huge would that be for Coach Prime in only the second season? Man, that'd be huge. That'd be right? huge. And, they're, and they're, a, they're a momentum team. That's what they yes. live off. They feed off of energy, you know. Mm-hmm. So if they yeah. – if they start getting catching fire and guys start making Amen. plays, it's yep, mm-hmm. it'll be exciting. It'll be really right. A couple, couple of weeks ago, what one in 11, I think, a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. last year, four wins, and now they're already four and one and have an opportunity if they can win this game to really make a statement and go yep. on in the Big 12. I think, um, this could be a very dangerous team, so absolutely, uh, 
very excited to see uh, what the result of that one is going to be. Uh, Colorado and Kansas State. Good, good game there. Um, good by the way, did did we bury Clemson too early after getting beat down by Georgia? I know I did. I thought it was a wrap for them, and now they're now they're number ten in the nation. They're four and one, three and zero oh in the conference. They could be on a uh, collision course with the Canes for the ACC championship game. Yeah, they're starting to they're starting to creep back in. I think a lot of people wrote them off just off of the I did. you know how they were playing, plus the NIL, mm-hmm. and they're not trying to get yeah. any money. And they're just you know they're on their way out, but mm-hmm. you know they're they're winning some games. So we'll see how sure. they kind of shake up. And again, for the storyline, it would be it would yes. be good for him to get to get close oh, yeah. into the playoffs. He and, and to do it they, his they, way, they need no. it. They need it right, and to do and it, to it his do way. way, absolutely, oh, like, absolutely. Right, like, I didn't need to go in the transfer oh, portal. Didn't I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't need to pay no NIL. You know, all we do, yeah. we get our guys out here, and I tell my guys, BYOG, bring your own guts. You know, that's there you go, there you go, story, you know there you saying? go. So, yeah, I think it would be a go. very entertaining story. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. So, we got some good games this weekend, and yeah. now we're getting into that second half of the season, and things are starting to heat up, and. Mm-hmm. We're, we're starting to see um, we're starting to get in just a little idea, maybe the lay of the land and, and where things will uh, eventually play out. Um, my Irish are number 11. They've got Stanford at home. They should win that game. And, mm-hmm. you know, as I told you, after the North Northern Illinois loss every week for them is go one and oh, concentrate mm-hmm. on going one and oh, try to just improve a little bit each week and see where it all plays out at the end. And it's very possible that they can finish this season 11 and one and make the playoff and then. After that, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, so uh, easy week last week, or we thought it was going to be an easy week last week, and then we got these mega upsets, and now we've got some uh, some really big games this weekend. Looking forward to seeing them. And, uh, yeah, we will go ahead and we will leave it right there. Ryan, thank you again for joining me, man. Appreciate you as always. Thank you. Thank you and uh, always. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, I will see you again next week. Enjoy the games this weekend. Please be safe. Um, you know, uh Hopefully, uh, everything is fine with the storm coming through. So, uh, yes, yeah, yes. we got Just praying for that. Yes, indeed. All right. So, uh, we will see you guys next time. And I'm out. Peace.